Well, it's once again been, I think, over a year since I made a fly video that have tied thousands of flies. But I got the camera back out, and I got a new light on my desk, so I'm going to try to make some new ones and redo some old ones. This is the Hex Nymph. This is probably the most elaborate or detailed one that I do, um, in production at least. But I've got it down to, I think, as few steps as possible, but there's lots of kind of intricate parts on this but it turns out it's pretty realistic fly so i'm using the daiichi uh, 1760 which has a little bit of a curve to it and a number eight for this one and then i use a three and a half millimeter bead chain that i just cut um, to two eyeball segments figure eight that on there Thread is Danville 210. I just like to use a stronger thread, so less wraps. And this thing is pretty much mostly done with just pheasant. So for the tail, I like to go on kind of this rump patch and grab one of these um, longer fibered, sometimes multicolored um, feathers for the tail. I'll just peel off the fibers from one half and I'll use the other ones on another side but the tail I do about the length of the body or so not a whole lot of fibers maybe just like I don't know eight or ten fibers or so and then I put down the wing case which I just use a Swiss straw super easy to work with and consistent I think this one is the copper color so I'll secure that on there then for the gill part, you go for the phyllo plumes, which if you dig in between the f bigger feathers on the pheasant or most birds, you'll find the phyllo plume feather, um, which is, are these long, skinny ones. But these are fantastic for making gills uh, for the back part of this mayfly. So I just tie that in by the stem there. Um, and then I use uh, copper ribbing. Uh, this, I like the larval lace dead soft copper. It just comes on this cute little spool and it seems to be uh, just a little bit more pliable as whatever reason it's a good consistency for me this is the 0.012 diameter so a little bit skinnier and easier to work with uh, for the dubbing on this I like to use some kind of cream stuff this is some weird uh, scrap craft for stuff that I have a garbage bag full of and I just put that through the coffee grinder and get this kind of uh, creamy guard hairy good looking dubbing but you can get the stuff pre-made in the bag or pull some off your cat whatever you feel like you need to do just get a nice creamy one that has some pokey guard hairs in it so it gives it some bugginess so i'll just dub that and you can use the rotary for this sometimes when i have all this stuff hanging off the back it's easier just to do this part by hand instead of chasing the copper and the swister all, all around so then I just fold, so that goes up about, I don't know, two thirds or so. And then I fold that phyllo plume over and just throw one wrap on there. And then if you got a long enough one, you can actually double it back over um, the top and then use that copper wire. You just put one tight wrap around there. And if there's some left, you can just pluck it off. And it really just takes one wrap of that copper wire. It's pretty slick to hold it down. And then I just kind of come and sometimes you got to play with your thumb to um, lay it down flat and then I just put a couple wraps around that Swiss straw and leave it there and then I just come in with the wire and kind of you can take more time or less time to kind of make it perfect weaving it through the phyllo plume fibers but I usually go for on these size eights uh, maybe three wraps so you get a kind of nice segmentation and also holds um, that phyllo plume together because it's fairly delicate so it gives it some strength and then I fold that uh, Swiss straw back on top of itself and wrap back a little bit just not too much maybe yeah about that one third back of the from the hook eye or so and then you just come in with more of that same dubbing and I try to make this part a little bit uh, beefier than the than the abdomen part and just kind of wrap on back on top of that Swiss straw I think I'll even put a little bit more on here. Yep, and I come right up to behind the eyes, but not, not through the eyes. And then for the legs, I go back to my pheasant. And I um, kind of like these ones here that have this uh, 
tr bi or tricolor. Sometimes they have that kind of insect greeny sheen to them. And then I just uh, peel the tip of it back and then I just tie it in by that very tip right behind the eye. And then I really literally only make one wrap with this around. And on those smaller ones, that's about all you could get out of anyways before you get down to the fuzzy fibers. But I kind of even like sometimes leaving a few of the fuzzy ones on there. And I just put a couple wraps and then kind of stroke it all back and make it uh, evenly divided on the left and the right. And then fold that wing case over, put a wrap or two in front of and behind the eye, fold it back, and you can get a nice clean uh, forehead on them or her. And then just whip finish right there. So I don't know how long that actually took. A little over five minutes, so kind of a longer fly to do. Um, but it's worth it and if you can keep it from getting snagged for a few casts at least. Uh, pretty realistic given uh, the number of materials and only taking five minutes once you get cranking on them. So there it is, the number eight hex.